Hi guys, my name's Thomas Busby and welcome to another episode of this landscape photographer trying to find the best wide angle lens available for the Fuji X mount system. In this episode we're taking a look at the 8 to 16 millimeter lens from Fujifilm. Just like last time guys, if you want to jump along to a certain part of the review, I'll leave links down in the description below so you can just jump ahead to whatever part you want to focus on. But to start with, let's take a look at the sharpness. For those wondering how I do my sharpness test, what I have is a little studio setup where I am photographing different lines per millimeter. I have at the moment a little bit of a cap and I'm not releasing the scores just yet until I do the whole overview video from these X-series mount lenses as I'm still trying to work out my baselines and what is phenomenal and what is average. But what I'm comparing is the lines per millimeter, how much finer detail I can get at a certain millimeter range and a certain aperture. So I have shot I don't know, hundreds of photos of this at each different millimeter range and each different aperture setting focused on the middle and then focused again on the corners just to see how well sharpness holds up. With the 8 to 16 millimeter lens in particular, center sharpness is phenomenal all the way up to about the f10, f11 mark, even right down to f2.8. For corner sharpness, it's pretty great once again from 2.8 all the way up to f11 if you stay above 10 millimeters. For less than 10 millimeters, I'd recommend staying under f8 to try and get as much optimal sharpness as possible weather sealing. Now this normally doesn't need a whole category on its own just to explain what weather sealing is but the reason it is getting it in this video is to get this wide and weather sealed makes this lens quite unique. Now weather sealing like I said in my 10 to 24 video might not be the be all and end all of lenses. I've definitely put my 10 to 24 through some wetter conditions and it's held up absolutely fine. However if you're shooting a lot of ocean content, a lot of waterfalls, something where there is a lot of moisture, having that full weather sealing and having faith in it makes a massive difference. So weather sealing definitely gets a point of mention in this video as to go that wide and be sealed is pretty hard to get. When it comes to value for money, the 8 to 16 is the most expensive lens I know of for the X mount system. If price isn't so much of an issue for you, you can definitely ignore this, but for a lot of us, price is a factor of something to consider when purchasing new lenses. And as the most expensive option, this really loses a lot of points because it is really high up there in the price compared to say one or two other lenses. When it comes to versatility, having that two time zoom going from that 8 to 16 mil actually does make this quite a few lenses in one. If you had an 8mm 2.8 that'd be great. If you had a 16mm 2.8 that'd be great. If you had a 14mm 2.8 lens that would be great. And this is all of those lenses in one package. It is definitely quite a bit bigger than say, so that's the 16 to 80. And if you ignore the lens hoods, they're getting closer in size. So you can, for those that have the 16 to 80, because this is probably quite a popular common lens, this is getting a little bit chunkier than it, but it's a pretty good size comparison. And so to have all those wide angle lens options in one package does make this pretty versatile for what it is. However, there are always those limitations of physics. I personally wouldn't want an 8 to 200 millimeter lens. Just the, the limitations of sharpness you can achieve and results you can get out of a lens like that for say a certain price, it's just unreasonable. So for an 8 to 16, it's pretty good. I don't know if I'd want it any more versatile than this, given the size that it already is. Next up, let's take a look at some of the physical dimensions and features of this lens. So first of all, the one I'm always aware of is that big bulb of glass right at the front of the lens there. That does stop you from screwing on screw-on filters, so you have to get a square drop and filter system. Next up is this lens cap. That is it. It is quite large, and it only goes on two ways. That way, or that way, and it actually clips on to part of this lens hood there. That there it's getting a borderline a bit big to put in some pant pockets. Not a biggie, but it's something to be aware of. The other thing with that big giant bulb of glass is it is very easy to get lens flare, whether you want it or not. But because that glass sticks out so much, the sun can really see that front element quite easily. And well, you can't really get a bigger hood without it just coming into the shot. So there's not much that can be physically done about it. It's just a bit of a limitation of having such a wide lens. It might sound real silly, but it makes, it makes really nice clicks when you, when you zoom. It sounds like it has a bit of internal dampening, a bit of padding, and it actually makes it sound, feel, and sound like a really good build quality. I know that sounds silly and immature, but <laughs> I like it. it. It sounds really good build. I guess the biggest thing that I was worried about before getting this lens was the size and the weight. Sorry, biggest after the price. The, def the price is definitely a big factor to consider. But I always thought this was, no matter what the quality was, just a little bit too heavy. However, after getting some hands-on time with it, I didn't actually find the weight too much of an issue. And if you compare the size to, say, the 10 to 24, yes, it is definitely bigger. But it is not 
excessively large. It's not like a 70 to 200 kind of dimensions. And so weight for me actually wasn't an issue, which was surprising. I guess when it comes to the balancing of it, once you've got a body on there, it's still a little bit front heavy and maybe a battery grip would balance that out a little bit. But say for vlogging, for walking around and talking with it, for just carrying it all day, I still did, still did not mind the weight and the size of this lens, especially given everything you get in this package. So weight and size for me, while it is the biggest and the heaviest, I wouldn't call it too big and I wouldn't call it too heavy. When it comes to lens corrections, it's 8mm. When you get that wide, you're definitely going to get some distortion. And as you tilt up and down, you're definitely going to see your image start to warp a little bit and stretch images towards the edges. However, shooting straight on, the barrel distortion, is it's not too bad. I mean, once again, at 8mm, you're going to get some. However, I found it held up pretty well. Where this lens actually surprisingly disappointed a little bit was its chromatic aberrations. Now these are very easy to remove but they still remove some detail near the edges but this did have a little bit of them in my studio test which surprised me given the price of this lens. As far as video goes it actually felt very comfortable walking around vlogging with that lens. The weight wasn't as bad as I was expecting it to be and wide angle is actually so comfortable for that filming and talking to yourself though it is still definitely big. As far as the focus speed goes on the X-T4, it was still quite snappy, but with the lens, no, sorry, with the microphone pointed right at the lens, well, this is the passive sound in my room, just with the light going. Right, so this is on manual focus. If you can hear any sound, it's coming from my light. And then as I move around and focus, it's, it's very snappy, but I can hear a little bit of sound from it. Be doing a good job of tracking. If I turn the volume right up just to emphasize all volume, so if you're in a quiet environment, you can hear that lens focusing and making a little bit of sound as I move around. So as far as video goes for vlogging and general use, it's absolutely fine. Don't get me wrong, those sounds are very enhanced just to show that they are there. But if you're filming in a quieter environment, there's that little bit, and it's just a small amount of sound as it's focusing, but I wouldn't consider this something to worry about. Honestly, it's a fantastic video lens as well. Before I give my final verdict, I feel like I need to emphasize a couple of, a couple of facts. This is weather sealed. It might not sound like much to you, and if it doesn't, cool, you're fine. But to get weather sealed at this wide is very, very useful for rain, waves, ocean, waterfalls. There are some situations where weather sealing is unavoidable because you will definitely destroy your lens very quickly. It is also f2.8 at 8 millimeters. I know I've said all this, but I really need to emphasize those facts because I feel, for the price, You'd be better off to get, say, the 10 to 24 and, say, the 16 or the 14 millimeter prime lens. That would get you your versatility, it would get you weather sealed options, it would get you that high quality, it would get you that very amount of brightness, but it just doesn't quite tick all the boxes that the 8 to 16 does. It's just such an expensive lens for what it does. As always guys, thank you very much for following along. If you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. If you could like, share and subscribe, it would mean the world to me. But until next time, I'll catch you next time.